Okay, let's give it a minute. Let's give it another minute. Okay, and beautiful, we are live. Hi, I'm Chelsea, and welcome to Space Chat. For those of you who haven't been here before, this is the weekly show where I go live at space.com. I talk about all things new in space and science, and I answer your questions live. Uh, so again, if you haven't been here before, the way it works is I give a little overview on what's been going on in space, and at any time, even right now, while I'm talking, you can drop a comment or question down below, and at the end, uh, I go through a ton of questions live, answering whatever questions you happen to pop into the chat, uh, of course, as long as they're appropriate. Uh, so I'm going to give everyone a second or two uh, to get situated as we are live, make sure that everyone has ample opportunity to join me if they would like, and... I'm going to dive into things. So a little preview this week, quite a bit has happened in space. I'll be talking about SpaceX's most recent launch, a bright comet coming to the night sky, a solar eclipse, and so, so much more. And of course, more space debris drama. Uh, so let's see. All right, we've got about a minute under our belt. So I hope you all have joined me. Without further ado, let's chat. So, as I say just about every week, space is a busy place, and this week was no exception. Uh, this week, SpaceX launched another Starlink uh, batch, launched almost another 50 of its Starlink internet satellites into orbit. Uh, the company launched 48 Starlink satellites, along with two Earth observation satellites for the company Black Sky Global. Now, this adds to SpaceX's ever-growing mega constellation of Starlink satellites that the company hopes to use to provide internet access across the world, even in remote areas that previously have not had internet access or reliable internet access. Uh, now, we might take this for granted, uh, especially in parts of the world where internet is such a given, um, really everywhere, but Actually, almost 50% of the world still lacks reliable internet access. So while it might seem that, of course, everyone has the internet, everyone doesn't have internet access yet. So that is SpaceX's hope with this mega constellation, um, though there has been continued conversation over ways to have a Starlink mega constellation without contributing to the space junk problem and without making it harder for astronomers to observe the night sky as Starlink satellites are visible. Um, they've been mistaken for UFOs, stars, uh, comets, all kinds of things. In fact, I have many emails in my inbox with people uh, saying this is a photo I took of an alien and it's a Starlink satellite. So there are still some hurdles, uh, but the company is making progress and moving forward with this internet constellation. Now, also recently, scientists discovered a scorching hot rocky exoplanet called GJ367b. I know it's not exactly a catchy name, but planets and, you know, cosmic objects like this usually get these types of names before they may be given easier to remember, catchier names. Now the exoplanet orbits a small red dwarf star about 32 light years from our own sun. Now this is fairly close, even though it's very, very far away. Uh, even though, you know, in terms of our own ability to travel places, this is unbelievably far away. It's actually fairly close in terms of the entire cosmos, um, as our Milky Way spans 100,000 light years wide. Uh, now, it's not the closest solar system to our own, that's Alpha Centauri, um, but 32 light years away in uh, a galaxy that's 100,000 light years across, that's pretty close. Uh, now, this week also saw some more scary uh, events with space debris. If you've been following along the last couple of weeks, space debris has been the hot topic of discussion after astronauts on the space station had to take refuge in their vehicles uh, after it was found and confirmed that Russia launched an anti-satellite missile test that exploded a satellite at the same or a similar altitude to the space station, creating a cloud of debris that will be in orbit for years causing these types of issues. Um, so space debris has been hot on everyone's minds. Now, this most recent space debris uh, was not confirmed, not confirmed or denied that it's from this Russian ASAT test, but 
Earlier this week, NASA did have to delay a spacewalk. NASA astronauts Thomas Marshburn and Kayla Barron uh, were set to replace an old antenna system that was about 21 years old, about as old as the space station, um, with a new system, but they had to reschedule because of a debris warning. Again, it was not confirmed uh, if this debris had anything to do with the debris cloud created by the Russian test. Um, it just happened around the same time. Uh, so what this all means is that they got an alert that there was a higher than average likelihood that a piece of space debris could pose a risk to the space station or the astronauts, so they postponed an event. But this was not the only space debris event of the week. I told you it was a busy one. Um, early this morning, actually, at about 3 a.m. Eastern time, the space station uh, had to make a very quick maneuver and dodge a piece of space debris from the old Pegasus rocket from decades ago. Uh, at around 3 a.m., a Russian cargo ship docked with the space station, um, but they had to do this quick maneuver. Um, they had to move the station an evasive maneuver to be careful of a rock fragment that passed just about 3.4 miles uh, away from the space station, which is extremely, extremely close. Um, now, the debris, dubbed Object 39915, was created in 1996 when the upper stage of a Pegasus rocket that had launched two years prior broke up in orbit. Uh, so this is the problem when we talk about space debris, is that depending at what altitude an object is, how far from Earth it is, that helps to determine how long it will stay in orbit. So especially older objects, before we really understood the threat of space debris, um, even from the Soviet era, you know, 50 some years ago, uh, far, far out in altitude, far from Earth, they're stuck in orbit for a long time before they're close enough to burn up in our atmosphere. So being in space that long, these objects collide with one another, creating more and more pieces um, that, again, stay in space for sometimes many, many years at a time. Uh, now, luckily, the space station maneuver was successful and there was no risk, no damage um, at the end of it all. But uh, it is definitely, you know, something that is to be avoided at all costs. A space station does have thrusters it can use to move, but uh, they don't want to be doing things like this all the time. Um, having danger present is obviously not ideal. So this week is also a big week for sky watching. For all of you astronomers and amateur astronomers and sky watchers at home, there's lots to see. Tomorrow, the big event is actually a total solar eclipse. In fact, a Space.com freelance contributor and sky watcher, Joe Rayo, uh, he's currently on a boat on his way this very moment to Antarctica, uh, where there will be almost two full minutes of totality visible during the eclipse. Uh, now, if you can't make it all the way to Antarctica to see totality, there will be live streams available and we will have it here at space.com so you can see it virtually. There will also be a few other parts of the world where it will be visible, at least partially. Uh, for example, if you live in Australia, South Africa, or Argentina, you might get a pretty good view. Um, recently, sky watchers may have seen a lunar eclipse, uh, as there were two this year, and lunar eclipses uh, happen when the moon moves into Earth's shadow and the Earth comes between the sun and the full moon, and it happens when the three align. With a total lunar eclipse, uh, when the trio are aligned just right, this shadow obscures the sun's light that usually reflects off the moon's surface. So instead of a bright, shiny moon, uh, what you might see is instead a blood red moon, uh, which is always a fantastic sight. So lots of different eclipses uh, that have been exciting and will be exciting this upcoming weekend. Uh, this, this upcoming few days, we'll also see the brightest comet this entire year. Now, if you're excited about Netflix's upcoming movie, Don't Look Up, which comes out next week, this isn't like that. There is no giant comet disaster approaching, no comet headed directly for Earth, nothing like that. Um, though, side note, I did see the movie and it is excellent. Uh, it is certainly one of a kind, genuinely recommend. Uh, and I would not say that if I did not feel it. Uh, but getting back to the comet, it's called Comet Leonard and it's the brightest comet of the year. Uh, it was discovered less than a year ago and back then it was just a dim, faraway chunk of space rock traveling out by Jupiter's orbit. Now, as it gets closer inward in our solar system, it's getting brighter and brighter to us from our vantage point. Now, for those in North America, Monday, 
very early in the morning, like 5 a.m. kind of early, uh, will likely be the best time to see it if the weather is nice. Uh, now, if you follow the Big Dipper out past its handle, you'll see the bright star Arcturus. And the comet will be just close to Arcturus, low on the horizon, um, if that helps you at all with your sky watching. Um, and if, if you spot Venus, another way to find it, if you spot Venus, uh, which is the brightest object in the sky right now, other than the moon and the sun, uh, the comet will be between Venus and the horizon. So if you've got Venus and if you've got the Big Dipper, you should be able to make out the comet. Uh, now, even if you are great at sky watching and finding objects, it will be a little bit tricky. Uh, according to Ed Krupp, uh, he said to NPR recently, he's an astronomer and the director of the Griffith Observatory in LA. He said the comet will be just about half the width of a clenched fist to the left of Arcturus, um, but it might not really be that visible. Uh, he said you might spot it with the unaided eye, but more likely you're gonna need binoculars or a telescope. Uh, if you live far away from the city where it's very dark, you might get lucky and be able to see it on your own. But again, it's not going to be quite as bright and spectacular as previous comet sightings like Neowise last summer uh, have been. So if you are an experienced sky watcher or you want to try your hand with some binoculars or a telescope, it might be the right time to do so. So that has been all that's new in space this week. Well, not all, but a snapshot. Uh, now we get to my favorite part of space chat the chatting. So if you haven't had the opportunity yet to ask a question uh, while I've been talking, now is a great time. So if you have a question about anything that I mentioned or anything space or science in general, drop it into the comments below and I will get through as many as I have time for. So I'm going to turn over to the comments and see what is going on. Okay. Ooh, Sweet Walt has a great question on YouTube. What's going on with SpaceX's Raptor engine problems? Uh, so it's still kind of a, a moving situation. So I'm not 100% sure what the status is right now. Um, but there was an email that was released earlier this week from Elon Musk to employees at SpaceX, basically telling them, work over Thanksgiving weekend. We've got to figure out what's going on uh, with the Raptor engines. We've got to get production going. We've got to be fast. We've got to get work done. Um, and there were some financial troubles mentioned, uh, some other issues. So I, I don't think there's enough for me to say conclusively exactly what's happening with SpaceX and these Raptor engines at the moment, but it does seem that there is something going on. Um, and over at space.com, we're continuing to follow the situation and we'll keep you in the loop. But yeah, pretty crazy. Okay. Davda on YouTube. What do you think about the Neutron Rocket? Yes, uh, Rocket Lab has its new Neutron Rocket. I think it's really cool. I think it's interesting. Um, I think that they are doing really uh, exciting things. Uh, they are a startup rocket company, but they're getting to be pretty big. Um, they're, I think, now getting to be the point where they're really competing with you know big companies like SpaceX, uh, like Boeing, like Blue Origin. They're definitely up there, um, and they are it's really exciting to see such a, a big and impressive rocket come from this company. So I'm excited to see what's next. Those are my thoughts. Okay. All right. This one on YouTube. Uh, okay. What if the ISS exploded? Okay. Interesting question. Uh, so uh, I guess it would depend if the ISS exploded because of some kind of freak natural accident, it would be a tragedy, uh, but it wouldn't be anyone's fault necessarily. Uh, but of course it would be a tragedy for humankind and for science. And depending on how big the debris chunks from the explosion were, we would have to do some intense and fast acting tracking to make sure that none of those debris chunks could survive our atmosphere and fall and cause any damage. So I think the first worry with something like this, if something like this were to happen, would be making sure that none of those chunks of material pose any threat to us here on Earth, uh, whether that be infrastructure or landing anywhere near people. Um, of course, if it was some kind of intentional attack, that would, of course, be a much different situation and would be a, a political situation. And there will be all kinds of things that would happen from that. So I'm not sure exactly uh, what more I could say on that. Okay, Sarah, where did the energy come from to cause the Big Bang? That's a great question, Sarah, and I would love to know. Uh, understanding the origins of our universe is still one of the biggest scientific pursuits out there. Uh, in fact, 
Later this month, uh, scientists are going to be launching the James Webb Space Telescope, which they hope by using infrared observations of the early, early universe to answer some of these questions, to better understand where did we come from? How did the universe start? Uh, what exactly happened during the Big Bang and to create and spark the Big Bang, to more fully understand how everything came to be? Great, great question. Uh, and I hope to answer that for you one day. Okay, Faisal on YouTube, what are the best movies or TV series about space? I think that's a matter of personal opinion. I did really enjoy Don't Look Up, which I saw the other day. I actually enjoyed it much more than I expected to. Uh, I think we've all seen our fair share of asteroid disaster, comet disaster, falling to earth uh, kinds of movies. And this definitely surprised me. It was definitely not your average uh, giant space rock headed for earth type of movie. Uh, it was funny, it was dark. It was so many things. Um, I love Star Trek. I love all kinds of different space movies and shows. Sound off in the comments below. What are your favorite space or sci-fi TV shows, movies? Uh, I'm curious to see what kind of fans we have in the comments. All right, let's see. Okay, Mark on Facebook. Chelsea, is it true that Tesla's new phone based on Starlink is designed to be used on Mars? Uh, I have not heard that, Mark. Um, I know that they are hoping to get Starlink more operational and more available to people in the near future. Uh, but Starlink is going to be a mega constellation specifically for providing internet on planet Earth. So, uh, you know, I'm sure that SpaceX has big plans uh, for Mars other than those that we already know about. Um, but it is not my understanding that these are phones designed for Mars, at least not yet. Okay, Steve on Facebook, do you think we will fight or have a war in space? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I, I, I really don't know. I hope not. Uh, but I do think that if we did, that it would probably at least look different than people might expect. I think when we think about a war in space, we see lightsabers and phasers. And I think that at least where we currently stand, I think that space warfare would more likely uh, look like countries targeting each other's satellites. Uh, satellites are so <laughs> integral to our daily lives. Everything from how our phones and GPSs work, um, how we communicate with each other, how we use the internet, how we share data, how we do our jobs, how we stay safe, national security. All of this is directly tied to how our satellites function in orbit in space. So I think that if we saw space warfare, it would look a little less like astronauts with lightsabers and a little more uh, like attacks on satellites um, as opposed to person to person combat as we see with wars here on earth. But it's interesting to think about what is possible. Okay. Okay, some questions I'm not sure what you mean. Your space TV, your room looks nice. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Ekaterina Alaro on Facebook asks, when will a human land on Mars? And if there are candidates already in training, this is a great question. So right now, NASA is still estimating that it hopes to land humans on Mars for the first time in the 2030s. I know that's extremely close to right now. Uh, now, there are not people who have been named um, who are actively known to be in training for any type of mission, whether it be with NASA or SpaceX or anyone else. Um, but I do know that NASA and SpaceX uh, have both stated previously that they aim to and hope to land humans on Mars in the 2030s. Uh, now, I think that NASA has a big job ahead of it. First, landing humans back on the moon with its Artemis program. But Artemis and landing humans back on the moon, NASA has said, is its next step in getting to Mars. Using the moon as a proving ground for technology, um, for spacesuits, for astronauts, for, you know, spacecraft travel technology to use the moon to better prepare ourselves for a human mission to Mars. Okay. Well, thank you so much for that wonderful question. And thank you all so much. As always, uh, join me again next week. Uh, and I will have some actual big announcements about the future of Space Chat and what you can expect in 2022. So thank you all so much.